What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. So the Maui fires, which is now the largest fire disaster in the United States history, is coming under a lot of criticism and for several reasons. President Biden is now headed to Maui, where at least 850 people are still missing after the catastrophic Hawaii wildfires. By some counts, 850. By other counts, over 1,000 people are missing. And uh, this is very, very tragic. Honestly, they're probably never going to even find all of these people. This also comes here as Hurricane Hillary is hitting California. Uh, a massive, massive hurricane there as well. Tropical storm or Hurricane Hillary uh, hitting Southern California record records stunning rainfall totals. You can see here Southern California residents feel magnitude 5.1 earthquake as tropical storm storm Hillary descends on the region. Re reported several small tremors after the earthquake nearly 80 miles northwest of Los Angeles, Angeles. So our prayers and thoughts for both Hawaii and California going on right now. Yeah, it's just absolutely crazy what is going on here right now. But the criticism is mounting here in Hawaii because of what happened here with the alarm system not being fired for these fires, take a look at what happened here during the incident. This morning, Maui officials tell NBC News 25% of the burn zone in Lahaina has been searched, but still more than 1,000 people remain missing. The chief of police describing the grim reality to me. When folks are shifting through burnt debris and dust is on you, it's not just dust on you, it's our dead. Still, anger is growing as we're learning more reasons why the wildfire seemed unstoppable. I feel just like I wish we could have done more. Lahaina firefighters Ina Kohler and her husband Johnny Verona tried saving their town, but said crews had no chance. Water pressure was too low. We ran out of water. You ran out of water with the nation's most deadliest wildfire? Yeah. Yeah. It was very disheartening. Officials now examining the timeline of events. Here's what we know. A brush fire near Lahaina was first reported around 6.30 Tuesday morning. While some evacuations were ordered, Maui officials thought they had it under control, announcing 100% containment around 9 a.m., possibly giving residents a false sense of security. Just hours later, hurricane force winds caused the fires to explode. Officials say emergency sirens were not activated. There'll be multiple reviews at every level. As fire approached their car, Akanesi Va'a and her family got stuck in traffic. The intense heat palpable from inside. You know, my son was like, oh, mom, is this it? And I mean, what do you tell your kids? With no way out, they had to flee on foot. That's when Akanesi saw this car with a little girl trapped inside. I grabbed her. She had. She was sitting on a blanket. I wrapped her with the blanket, and I told my kids, you guys run. Don't turn around and look for me. And my 9-year-old couldn't. She just kept telling me, Mom, I can't. Luckily, they survived. Her family now safe. My heart is in Lahaina. I mean, Lahaina is home, period. So incredible they were able to rescue that child. Now, of the 2,200 structures destroyed in the burn zone, about 80% of those were residential. So with so many people displaced, the government is working with hotels here, Airbnbs, and local landlords to find housing units. They've been able to find about 2,000, but they're also calling for people who live on the mainland in the United States to come over and please offer up any second homes or condos or apartments they may have to help the people here in Maui. And now the biggest controversy maybe of all is that the alarm systems didn't go off and uh, county officials or state officials are saying that they didn't use them. And we'll give you the reason why I'll actually let you hear exactly what they're saying here. 
But the problem here is that before the flames even went off, Hawaii State reminded Maui sirens could be sounded for fire evacuations. That's right. Emergency Management Agency is now admitting there was discussion about whether or not to blow Maui's emergency warning sirens ahead of what's become the deadliest fire in the United States in more than a century. H&N Investigates confirmed an assistant telecom officer working at the state emergency management office reminded his counterpart at the Maui Emergency Management Office that sirens could be used to alert residents of wildfires. The state says this happened prior to the catastrophic blaze that swept through Lahaina Town. Despite that discussion, sirens remained silent. When asked, many residents agree had they gone off, lives could have been saved. I don't think I know. We all are prepared for that. We know that sound. We asked the state to tell us exactly what time that conversation regarding emergency sirens took place. We also asked who the state telecom officer was talking to. Two days after submitting those questions, officials at both the state and the county have not provided any response. What's also unclear is who was calling the shots as flames spread. Oh. H&N Investigates revealed the head of Maui County Emergency Management, Herman Andaya, wasn't there. Documents show he left the day prior to attend a FEMA meeting on Oahu. This despite knowledge Hurricane Dora was churning south of the state, a storm that was forecasted to trigger destructive winds. I think it's a fairly shocking decision. UH political scientist Colin Moore questions why Andaya ever left Maui, saying he could have sent a representative to attend the meeting in his place. It's not a normal bureaucratic position. It's a very specialized job, and if there's an emergency, I think the expectation is uh, that she'll be there present uh, directing operations. I think the public is owed an explanation for why uh, an emergency management director would have left knowing that there is a hurricane approaching. I mean, certainly you can skip a meeting um, if it involves your primary job responsibility. Questions also surround when and Daya returned to the island. That same hotel receipt shows he didn't check out until the morning after the blaze. It's a 30 minute flight. Uh, multiple flights leave every hour. Um, so it's not hard to get from Honolulu back to Maui. Um, and so I don't fully understand why the head of a county emergency operations department wouldn't have returned immediately. Following the fires, Endaya was noticeably absent from all press conferences for a full week. During his first public appearance Wednesday, he had this to say. Do you regret not sounding the sirens? I, I do not. The sirens, as I mentioned earlier, is used primarily for tsunamis. Had we sounded the siren that night, we're afraid that people would have gone Malka. And if that was the case, then they would have gone into the fire. An answer that left many residents in disbelief. I'm flabbergasted by that. People are not dumb. People know what to do. Yeah, officially resigned a day after making those statements, citing health reasons. The mayor has said he's working as quickly as possible to find a replacement. Yeah, so if you've ever been to Hawaii, you've seen those sirens. They're pretty much everywhere. And... Uh, that is a, it is a tough one. I personally think that sounding the alarms would have been a lot better because there was probably so many people in their homes. And if the fires were upon you, you wouldn't have known it maybe until the very last few minutes until you maybe smelt the fire or heard the fires or something along those lines. And those, those sirens could have given you many extra minutes that would have been you know, crucial to your survival, um, you know, smoke inhalation, anything along those lines. And, you know, not necessarily, I mean, you may have thought it was a tsunami or anything along those lines, but it would have gave you the alert notice that something is wrong. You get out of your house and then you look and you say, oh, there's a fire. Okay. Now I know what the emergency is. OK, whether you think it's a tsunami, a hurricane. And again, remember, people knew that a hurricane was in the area. It's not like that wasn't a surprise. OK, so it doesn't matter what they, when they hear the sound, they can think it's a tsunami. That's fine. But when they go outside their house, OK, then they see the fire. 
it again, like that lady said, it's it's not like people are stupid. When they see a fire, they're going to know, okay, let's not go towards the fire. Okay? Big blazing fire around your home, you're going to see it. It's common sense at that point. Okay? So I agree that they should have sounded the alarm and I think that was a major major mistake. Some people are calling for uh criminal prosecution against this guy or maybe other officials. You guys can let me know your thoughts on that here in the comments. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be too little too late for the lives that are lost and the hundreds of people, maybe even over a thousand people that are still missing. Um, I think one of the most important things now is that, again, we learn from this mistake so that the next time around this doesn't happen and isn't as severe. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here as more of this is still unfolding. We have a hurricane going on or now a tropical storm in California. And again, we're in store for a massive, massive hurricane season right now. Um, and with the El Nino actually going on here. So we're actually, you know, this hurricane right now in California is a bizarre one. We ha haven't had a hurricane like that on the west coast of California in decades. And we're expecting a massive, massive hurricane season for this uh, upcoming hurricane season. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at, on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Click here to see why banks are closing in dozens of states. Or you can click here to see why retail stores are having to raise their prices across the U.S. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.